In this lesson, we're going to look at the depth snap property. When depth snap is enabled, the selected object will be transformed in all three axes and snapped to the X, Y, Z position of the target component. So as I move and snap the switch object to different components on this torus and cylindrical base object, then we see that the selected object gets snapped to the exact position of that target component. If I disable depth snap and then move the switch object and snap it to the points on the torus object, then we see that the selected object doesn't actually get translated to the exact X, Y, Z coordinates of the component that I snapped to. What happens is the translation gets constrained to the current construction plane. At the moment, I don't have a construction plane enabled in the scene. And so Houdini is using the current view plane as the construction plane to move the object along. In a perspective view, constraining movement along the view plane isn't often particularly useful, but it can be useful when working in an orthographic view. So for example, if I switch to the two viewport side by side layout by tapping control plus the two key, and I just move this switch object so that it's above both of these objects in the Y axis. And now as I move the object around in the top orthographic view, whichever point I snap to, the control knob object never gets moved up or down in Y. And that's because it's being constrained to the viewing plane of the top view. If I enable depth snapping again, and I'll also just switch to wireframe mode, and now if I snap the switch object to a point on the torus again in the top view, we see that now the switch moves down in the Y axis and snaps to the X, Y, Z position of the target component. Disabling this depth snap option can be useful when we're working in a perspective view with construction planes. So I'll hover the cursor over the perspective view and tap space plus B to expand that viewport to a single view. And I'll snap and align the construction plane to the top surface of this base object by holding down the slash key and I'll click on the center point of this top surface here. Now, if I disable depth snap and move the control knob above the construction plane and then move it to snap it to one of these points below the top surface again, then we see that the object gets snapped to those points, but the movement is constrained to the construction plane. We can see as I'm moving and hovering over the target points, we're getting this vertical line drawn between the handle and the target component, which lets us know that we'll be snapping to that point, but the selected object won't get moved off the construction plane. If I turn depth snap back on and do the same thing, then we see the control knob gets snapped to the actual point position in all three axes. When we're working with depth snap enabled, and it is enabled by default for each of the snapping modes, then the axis constraint handles will always allow us to snap to components whilst constraining the movement to a single or two axes. So I'll turn off the construction plane and if I move the switch object back up above the cylindrical base again and drag on the XZ plane constraint handle, as I drag over points using this, we get that same vertical line indicating it's snapping to a point at a different depth whilst constraining the movement to that XZ plane. So that's a look at how we can use the depth snap properties to choose whether an object gets snapped to the X, Y, Z coordinates of a target component or whether the transform gets constrained to a construction plane or view plane. 